Okay, this little video, I'm not going to exactly read all of this, but this is one of our new books, and I really want some of you, you know, this is great. I can tell you about this book and show you the pictures and stuff, and you can't interrupt me. So this is called The Girl Who Drew Butterflies and how Maria, Marian's art changed science. So this is a biography. True story. Look at all those butterflies. The girl who drew butterflies. Title page. Black and white illustrations. So the contents. Huh. Eggs, hatching, first in star, second, third, fourth in star, molting, pupa, and closing, expanding, flight, and an egg. So let's see. So they give you a butterfly glossary, glossary, a compendium of insect words used throughout this book. Chrysalis, a hard case that protects a moth or butterfly at the pupa stage of growth. A cocoon, a covering often made of their own silk, which moth caterpillars and some other instincts or insects make around themselves for protection while in the pupa stage. I'm not going to read all this, but I want you to see this because when you come in, you can check it out. So it says, a girl in the garden. A girl knees, kneels in her garden. It is year 1660 and she has just turned 13 too old for a proper German girl to be crouching in the dirt, according to her mother. She's searching for something that she discovered days ago in the chilly spring air. As she combs the emerald bushes, she looks for other fairy tale signs, or telltale signs. Eggs no bigger than pinpricks, or leaf edges scalloped by the jaws of an inching worm. <sighs> she found it, a crinkled brown cocoon. Oops. Anchored on a branch, like a sailor's hammock, she inspects its crumpled surface. Any change since yesterday? Any sign of life within? Nope, not yet. Her neighbors despise the creatures that fasten. Her neighbors despise the creatures that creatures that fascinate her. They believe that all flying, creeping things are pests born of filth and decay. If any of them spotted this swaddled cocoon, they would rip it off and they would crush the vermin within, giving it no thought to what it might become. She, But for years, she has gathered flowers for her stepfather's studio, gath, carried them in, and arranged them for his still-life paintings. She had studied the creatures that ride on their petals, the soft green bodies of caterpillars, the shiny armor of beetles, the delicate wings of moths, she has looked at them closely, sketched, and painted them. And in learning the skills of an artist, she has learned to look and to watch and to wonder. Imagine this girl, forbidden from training as either a scholar or a master artist because she's female, aware that in near, nearby villages, women have been hanged for, as witches for something as simple as showing too much interest in evil vermin. Yet she is drawn to these small, mysterious lives. She does not believe the local lore that summer birds or butterflies creep out from under the earth. She thinks that there is a connection between butterflies, moths, caterpillars, and the rumpled brown cocoon before her, and she is determined to find it. This is her story. Whoops. So that's all I'm going to read of that, but... Um, I'm just going to flip through a couple of these pages. This is a really interesting book. It's got some old things and some newer things. Look at there's a really nice. That painting was painted in 1645. Oh, by this, this woman's husband. Okay, so 
Um, for some of you who want to be artists or like drawing, want to know and hear about where it's come from, this would be a nice book. And again, it's called The Girl Who Drew Butterflies. And it's a biography. There you go. Thanks.